Okay, I hope this is recording to the cloud, who knows? Okay, sorry about the delays. Um, still seems to have some technical uh, technical problems. Welcome back, everyone. It's very nice to uh, to see everyone here. It's, uh, does I see Philip? Does that matter? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, so we're looking at the figure of uh, of Rabbi Yitzchak of Enki Nittel, El Edoterich Dova Nittel. Um, what, what I'd like to do is first of all just try and um, understand what this din of Enki Nittel, El Edoterich Dova Nittel is, and uh, what, what, what's the, the logic behind it. So uh, before that, I'll remind you of the maths of the previous figure. So on um, Membeth, on the base, when the Gemara first began discussing the the Mishnah that says a nose in Klitachas on air. Um, the first suggestion the Gemara gave was Rav Chista, who said that who, who drew a distinction between um, putting a Kli under between the Mishnah scenario and the similar din that you can't put a Kli under a town of Golis to Le Kabul Beit Sasa, but you can put a Kli on top of a Tana Godis. And the Gemara said that the distinction was on, on top of the egg, I'm sorry, yeah, on top of the egg. And the Gemara said that the, um, yeah, if it's on top of the Tana Godis, what would the problem be? Seder, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe it's Seder on Shabbos, okay. Um, so, and might suffocate the egg also, so it might be Shrita, uh, but it's sort of killing, killing animals. Okay, so, um, Rashi, and the Gemara said the distinction was Hatsala Matsuya or Hatsala Sheina. Mutsuya, that's the distinction the Gemara drew. Now, what's frustrating in that Gemara or, or puzzling in that Gemara is it doesn't say what the Issa is. It, all the Gemara does is it goes jumping straight into what the distinction is, but it doesn't explain what the working mechanism of the prohibition is. That, that's, that's the confusion in the Gemara. So Rashi learned that that Gemara was also relying on the concept of because the next Gemara says that the problem is Mvatul Klimei Chonoi. And in Mvatul Klimei Chonoi, there's a clear distinction between putting something on top and putting something underneath. Because when you put it underneath, it becomes a bosses and it becomes Muksa. And if it's Mvatul Klimei Chonoi, when you put it on top, it doesn't become Muksa. And if there's no Mvatul Klimei Chonoi. But our Gemara, the first Gemara, doesn't draw that distinction. Instead, draws the distinction of Hatsala Matsuya, Hatsala Sheina Matsuya. And therefore, the uh, Rashi explains that the real issue there is Ain Kli Nittel, Ella Lusur Tava Nittel. That Kli can only be used for something which isn't Muksa, but it can't be used for the sake of something which is Muksa. And the distinction the Gemara Gok draws is um, between Matsuya, uh, Hatsala Matsuya, and Hatsala Sheina Matsuya. That's the structure of the Sukhya. Other than the ones in the Gemara, as to what is the Tzolomitsuya? Um, no, and I'm not going to go into it because it's really the earlier sugya. Yeah, that's the sugya of but no, we, we don't have a clear, a clear definition. Um, but all I'm bringing out from that sugya is, is I'm not going into Tzolomitsuya, I'm just bringing out from the sugya. The sugya doesn't tell us what the problem is, it tells us what the distinction is. And Rashi says the problem is uh, Ain't Clean Little. Why am I mentioning that? For two reasons. One is just the clarity of the flow of the Gemara. So even though here is the first time the Gemara introduces Rabbi Yitzchak says Ain't Clean Ittel, according to Rashi, that was really the working mechanism of the, the earlier sugya also. So that's the, the first point. The <laughs> other Rishonim gave some other explanations earlier about what the problem was. So for example, we saw from the, uh, the Rashba and others, that maybe the problem was, maybe the Gemara was given the working problem. And it's saying that Hatsala is the problem. We do find such an idea. We find that um, there's, there's limits on how you can rescue things from fires, because Chazal were worried that when you're in a process of Hatsala, that you become a uh, Torah and you become confused, you're vulgar, and you might end up doing Malachas. So maybe that's what the early Gemara is saying. It's saying a new prohibition, a new Issa of putting Kalim to catch drops of oil or eggs because of Hatsala, because Hatsala is itself its own Issa. Or we saw the Rishonim saying that maybe um, there's a different issue in making things, uh, using such things as this, making something work, so because you're minimizing the things that you can use things for on on uh, on, uh, on uh, Shabbos, you're putting a uh, Kalim out of action and so on. The Gemara doesn't there say what the issue is. All I'm saying for now is that Rashi there says that the problem is um, Ain Klin Ittel. That's how Rashi learns the, uh, the problem because of Ain, ain Klin Ittel. Now, I mention that also because we need to do Chazara, therefore, very briefly, in the Rishonim that we saw over there about trying to understand what the issue is of, um, of Ein, Ein Klinitl. Why should there be a problem of Ein Klinitl? Ela uh, 
Sarah Stav Hamitel. So I've printed on the source sheet a number of uh, Rishonim that address this issue. Um, I'm actually not going to go in the order of the source sheet. I'll, I'll, I'll go in uh, a slightly different... Uh, maybe we'll follow the source sheet. The state of Uraim in source 7 um, says, Kaimelon Krab Yitzchak. There, there is, I should mention, a, a, a significant focus about whether we paskin the Salach of Inklinitel and the Salach of Anitel. We're not yet up to going in the Halach of Lamaisa, but um, most Rishonim of the opinion that we do not paskin in clean at all. At the halacha, this does not enter into the halachic system, and we do not pass in clean at all and reserve the at all. The Uraim, um, who is uh, the aim, uh, Reb Lezim Mitz, one of the uh, Bali Tosfers, Paskins, that we do, says we do hold that Kav Yitzchak. He says, Kamen on Kav Yitzchak, we Paskin on Kav Yitzchak, to Amma Papirik Kira, Shem Shein Noit in Kitach of Kamen Gobi, the Kabul Beit Lothar, Mishum the Einim Vatim Kime Echonoi, so the Uraim says something most bizarre. He says, we pass the night Rabbi Yitzchak, the Enkli Nittal, Elo Deserot of Anitol, because we also hold the Yonot Nadim in Vathel Chimei Echonu, which was the previous Gemara. So again, we, we, we're now in our third explanation of what's going on in the Mishnah. The first explanation that, uh, that the Gemara brought was Hatsana Matsuya versus Hatsana Shaina Matsuya of Chista, which Rashi said was also the idea of Enkli Nittal. The second explanation was Mavatul Kimei Chanoi, and the third explanation is Rabbi Yitzchak, who says Enkli Nittal. The Uraim says we pass the night Rabbi Yitzchak that Enkli Nittal because um, we also hold that you're not allowed to Mavatul Kimei Chanoi. So the Uraim seems to understand that this din of Enkli Nittal, Elo Dosayich Lavan Nittal, is like an extension of the idea of Mavatul Kimei Chanoi. What is Mavatul Kimei Chanoi? You're making a Kaini Mukta. Why are you not allowed to make a Kaini? Mukta. So one answer we saw to this question is because by definition the keli is not muchan for that use. It's not prepared for 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 that use. The essence of mukta is that uh, something is not uh, omed is not um, uh, by default uh, in a, a set aside for this functionality. The functionality of making something mukta is is one uh, is 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 one. Um, it, it, with respect to that functionality, it is mukta. Rashi said that the reason for Mavatul Kimechano is because of Boina or Sosa. But we use this Uraim. Again, the Uraim makes an equation between Enkli Nittal and Mavatul Kimechano. So we, we used it in the Uraim twice. We used it when we learned Mavatul Kimechano, and now we're using it the, the other way around to prove that the Uraim understood that both these halachas are mukta type dinim. Rashi said the reason why you can't be Mvatul Kimei Chano is because it's Bono or Sosa, nothing to do with Mukta. It's a new Takana because it looks like Bono or Sosa. But the Uraim equates the din of Mvatul Kimei Chano and Enki Nittal and, and, and puts the two together. He says one is an extension of the other. The only way I know how to make sense of this is to understand that they're both Mukta type dinim. I'll come to one moment earlier. They're, they're both Mukta type dinim, meaning to say that Mvatul Kimei Chano is the, the more limited version of it. You're not just using the non mukta kali for something mukta, but you're dedicating to it. You're making it mukta itself. You're you're moving the vessel to it. You're making a bottle to it. You're putting it out of action. You're redefining this kali for mukta functionality. By definition, it's, it's mukta for that. Um, the chiddush of Rabbi Yitzchak is to extend it to even just using a utensil for um, uh, a non for mukta item. Uh, it, 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 you aren't allowed because it's mukta with respect to that. Again, let me just try and try and explain this step back a little bit and explain this a little bit more clearly. We talk about we 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 we, we slip into the habit when we learn about Shabbos of talking about is something mukta on Shabbos or not. Well, that terminology isn't correct really because there's many sorts of mukta. Or more precisely, there's mukta with respect to certain things or not with respect to other things. So, example at the um, on the continuation of our sugya, we see an idea of taking something the Torah and Komo. So uh, this is relevant in practical halacha. If you have a kli which is mukta, because for example, it's a kli shemalachto leisa, a kli whose uh, default um, use is prohibited. So such a kli is mukta. Um, a hammer. So a hammer is normally used for knocking nails into walls. A hammer is kli shemalachto leisa. Nonetheless, you can use it letorich kufoi. You can use the hammer for a permitted use. You need to crack open a coconut, you can use it for that. You can move the hammer, the Torah Makomo, if you need the place where the hammer is situated. Why is that? Because the hammer is a keli. The hammer is a utensil. All utensils, by definition, have a degree of um, preparation or preparedness for human uses. It just happens to be that its default use is a also use. And if it's mukta with respect to its default use of using it as a hammer, and therefore, since the primary use of the KD of the hammer is for hammering 
nails in. Um, the body of the hammer is prohibited to move some just because I want to move it around. However, it is prepared for particular uses. It's prepared for multi uses by default, even though cracking coconuts is quite a, quite a rare use. It's automatically, Ome is automatically prepared for that because it is a utensil, and therefore I can use it, Latoras um, Gufo. I can also move it, Latoras Makomo, because it's prepared for use of, of clearing the space upon which it's located. I can't move it, Mechamon itself. I can't move it from the sun to the shade to protect it, because that's just looking at the body of the hammer. And then since the default use of the hammer is for Mukta activity, it's not prepared for that. So when we say a hammer is mukta, we mean with respect to certain functionalities. Mukta with respect to other functionalities, not. A stone is mukta machmas kufo. A stone is fundamentally not a kadi at all. And therefore, a stone is mukta, even if I want to use it to crack a coconut, because it's not prepared for any use whatsoever. The way we are suggesting in the equation that the Sefer Yureim makes between mavatul ki mechonoi and enkli nisal and reserved of our mutter is that all kadim, even permitted kadim that aren't mukta at all, are mukta with respect to unprepared functionalities around them. What would be an unprepared on functionality? By the definition, using it for a mukta need. The, 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 the tzotzes of the shaman are mukta because they're fundamentally un, unusable on shabbos. They're fundamentally not prepared for use on shabbos. To use this kadi for the sake of catching these tzotzes is a mukta use even of this non-mukta kadi. And there's even things which aren't mukta, which we think of as not being mukta, they're not even a klisha malach la, la, la isra. It's klisha malach la hatu. it's a bowl, it's a cereal bowl. It's not mukta in the least. Nonetheless, it's mukta with respect to this particular use of using it for the sake of mukta. And that's what the Ure means when he equates these two things. The Manda Omar, the first opinion in the Gemara that says only vassal ki mechono is asa, they're saying that taking a kedi and specifying it, dedicating for muksa use, it's not prepared for that use. And Rabbi Yitzhak extends it and says any use of a kedi for uh, for a muksa use, it, with respect to that, it is uh, muksa. So we've seen this uraim. I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing a, a double profit from this uraim because we're using it both ways around. When we learn the sukkah of Vasaki Mechano, we, we use the uraim to introduce an idea different to Rashi. But the problem with Rasul Khan is not because it's a new prohibition of Bona Sosa, but it's because of a muksa type halacha. And here in uh um in the of Muksa, we're also suggesting it's because it's another way of with respect to that, this KD is uh is muksa. So Eli, are you waiting? <laughs> Because it, how he's reading Gemara is is strange in itself, because in Rabbi Yitzchak, the, the Gemara is saying an equation. The Gemara is saying in the same way as you can't put it underneath an egg, you also can't uh, put it on top of the egg. That's his uh, that's that's his statement. Now, why can't you put it underneath the egg? We would have said, because if he's saying it's the same, we would have said it's the same because of ein kli nittel. But the Uraim doesn't say that. He says it's the same because just like you can't do that because it's mevatel kli mechano, even putting it on top is prohibited because it is ein kli nittel. It is true that there may be other reasons why you need a different reason, but when he's proving that Kaimalon, that's only if there's a link between the two in the level of Kashem, because otherwise he's simply, uh, you know, actually, I want to press the pause button, because may, maybe your eyes actually want, once we've seen Tosis, maybe this is incorrect. I need to relook at this. Can I just explain, Elio, does everyone understand Elio's question? The, the uraeum, I'm arguing that the uraeum is making an equation. Maybe the uraeum is coming to solve a different problem, which is Tosus asks, why would you not announce, why would you not be allowed to put, it doesn't help. Well, we need to work out the math again. You're correct in what you're saying, but it doesn't help because why would you need, the Meister of Yitzchak does say that you can't put the key on so you can't move the kli for Tzorach Dover She'ina Nittal. And, and it, it, once that reason, once the halach we Paskin like that reason, then that reason is even enough to explain why you can't put the baits there. Tosis is going in theory. 
Tosus is in the realm of non halach namaisa. Tosus asks a question. Let, let, can I just explain this conversation? Everyone, what's going on? Here? Okay, it's a fine point you're making, and it needs thinking through. But I, I, I think it's incorrect. I'm not 100 sure if it's right or not. Okay, so Tosus and other Rishonim um, discuss whether Enkli Nital Ela Latoyach Dava Hanital gets caught up in the argument between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda about the extent of Mukta. We're not, we're not going to go into that today. It's, it's, it's really the, the, the beginning. It's linked to the top of the next moment. But there, there is a machlokas, Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi whether we hold of mukta or not. Now, even though this machlokas is deceptively labelled, that Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold a mukta, the real translation of that is he doesn't hold of some muktas, but he does hold of other muktas. So this uh, assumes that the concept of ein kli nittel, el latorich dava ha is only with respect to, is only in Rabbi Yehuda who holds of Mukta, but not in Rabbi Shimon who doesn't hold of Mukta. Now, therefore, Tosus has a problem. What, according to Rabbi Shimon who doesn't hold of Mukta, where there's no ain't clean at all, why would you not be able to put the the bowl under the egg to catch the egg? How would we explain it, or under the Tosus to catch the How would we explain the Mishnah if Rabbi Yitzchak holds a clean at all, and in clean at all doesn't make sense according to Rabbi Shimon? Answers Tosis, Rabbi Yitzchak is adding the reason of Ein Kli Nittel, but he also agrees that um, that Mavatol uh, Kimechono is a problem. So Elio is suggesting, therefore, maybe this is the reason in the Uraim, you can't put it under the egg because of Mavatol Kimechono, and you can't put it on top of the egg because of Ein Kli Nittel. That's your suggested reading in Rabbi Yitzchak's statement. The problem with that is that Tosis is trying to explain a Mishnah, and he's trying to explain how would we explain the Mishnah according to Rabbi Shimon. But in practical halacha, which is what the Uraim is saying, once we have the broader principle of ain't clean at all, you, you don't you don't you don't need the first principle of, of putting the clean on top because you have the broader principle of, of, of it. So Rabbi Rabbi Yitzchak's job, the Uraim's job is not to explain the theoretical explanation of how Rabbi Yitzchak would learn a Mishnah, his job is to pass in the halacha. So Yes. 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 I, I think I put that on there. Yeah. That is correct, but nonetheless, I don't know why. I, I, I want to take this offline just because we, we, we've got very caught up in the cash and I'm, I'm, I'm not. We need to work out whether where, I need to work out the maths of uh, where, where the maths of what you're saying is provable. Um, yes, Tosis did a maskal Bashani, I think it is. Uh, I um I think it's close to the vessel of the Shani day. Yeah, the Shani the Shani day was our Yeah, third last one. Yeah, the Shani day. Yeah. Okay. Um. The, the, the truth is, without us getting too caught up in the Hashemel of Tosis, the same point I'm saying in the Uraim is actually provable in Tosis also. Um, I just didn't want to get to it because I, I didn't want to get too caught up in maths at this point. But uh, since ADI has dragged us into this, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll follow this also. Let, let me just summarize the, the, the issue because it, because it's remarkable and, and difficult Tosis to understand. Um, Tosis, so, without getting confused in the, in the whole Hashbun, because I, I don't want everyone to get overwhelmed by the maths of the Sukkot, because the maths of the Sukkot is a little, is a, is a little sorry? Too late, okay. So, so let's just step back. Let's take a deep breath and just try and and um, and keep things simple. There is a machlokas between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda as to how far we take the laws of Mukta. That's a that's a that's a, a piece of background information which we'll have to get onto as we move on to the next Omud. Rabbi Shimon has more limited Mukta. Rabbi Yehuda has broader Mukta. Even though the Gemara sort of says it as if Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold the Mukta at all, it really means Rabbi Shimon has a more constrained Mukta. Rabbi Yehuda has a, a broader Mukta. Now, Tosfos seems to be of the opinion that if I have an object that both Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda would agree it's mukta, so somewhere where they are in agreement that it's mukta, like a, a dripping from an oil or, or an egg of a, 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 a baits of a tana goddess, 
Both of them agree it's mukta. Nonetheless, the logic of ein kli nittel el anatzorich dava el nittel only makes sense in the broader view of mukta Rabbi Yehuda, but not in Rabbi Shimon. So again, Rabbi Yehuda has a broader category of mukta. Rabbi Shimon has a narrow category of mukta. In other words, everyone agrees that something which is completely non-functional, its functionality is completely being changed, completely dismissed from use. Everyone would agree in that case that that, that it is uh, that it's mukta. For example, a, a dripping of a of a lamp or an egg from a, a tarmogodis, which wasn't in existence for Shabbos. Where do they argue about hammers and the like? But everyone would agree that something that was completely non-existent for Shabbos, for example, would be mukta. That's the background. Now, can I move a cereal bowl to protect this egg? So Rabbi Yitzchak says no, because you can't move a bowl for the sake of something mukta. All of us would think that once we're talking about an object that everyone agrees is mukta, in that respect, there's a commonality between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yoda, and everyone would agree you can't move the cereal bowl for that. So again, we have two objects in front of us, A and B. B, Rabbi Yehuda holds as mukta, Rabbi Shimon thinks isn't mukta. So obviously I can move a cereal bowl to cover B according to Rabbi Shimon, because it's not mukta, and according to Rabbi Yoda, I can't, because it's mukta. A is something that everyone agrees is mukta. An egg, a sp- uh, drippings of oil. Everyone agrees it's mukta. With respect to that, if Rabbi Yitzchak holds as a swara that you can't move something for the sake of something that's mukta, then everyone should agree that, in respect to Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi that you can't move it. So it's not like that. Tosa says that if it is, uh, it, that only Rabbi Yehuda would hold that you can't move something for the sake of something that's mukta, but Rabbi Shimon was told you can move something for the sake of something that's mukta. Why not? What, what logic would there be? Just because Rabbi Shimon has a narrower category of mukta and Rabbi Yehuda has a broader category of, of mukta, why should there make it be a difference? I think that we see from Tosa the same idea. The ain't clean little is a mukta type din. Why can't I move the cereal bowl to cover the mukta item? Because I'm using it for a mukta type use. On that case, it says that makes sense in Rabbi Huda as a broader mukta category. But comes Rabbi Shimon, who says that cereal bowls aren't mukta because they're kalim, hammers aren't mukta because they're kalim, even though they're designed for mukta use. So the cereal bowl using it for mukta use shouldn't be mukta. So the whole logic of Rabbi Yitzchak that in clean little only makes sense with Tosas in Rabbi Huda, not in Rabbi Shimon. So I think even in Tosas, we arrive at the same conclusion. The Ain Kli Nittel is not some sort of new halacha. It's, it's, a, it's a mukta type halacha. It's telling us that with respect to using something for a mukta object, the bowl, the cereal bowl, is mukta. It's mukta for that sort of use. And that's what Tosa says. It only can be mukta according to the broader definition of mukta, not according to the narrower definition of mukta. Is, is, is anyone with me here? Is, 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 yeah, is this okay? Lefty? Okay, yeah. I, I apologize for this. I, I'm, I'm struggling to uh, myself to cope with the master this again and the long distance. Okay, but yeah. But then you talked about something which is mukta. Okay, so the simplest, the pashtas is that something which isn't mukta. Um, can be used for uh, so, it, it, the problem here is when we when we talk about something being muksa or not muksa. As I say, we we need we need to really look at muksa for certain functions, not for other functions. So a klisha malach, a stone is muksa for everything. A klisha malach to issa is muksa for defaults, neutral power of purposes. It's not muksa for specific need like the serif kufay or the serif makobi. A bowl, a, a cereal bowl or the like. Um, on face value, should be mutter for power of needs, like moving a mechamal at hell, but maybe is mutter with respect to non-needs, just fiddling with it. There's an opinion of Rav Nechemi and the Gemara that all items are somewhat mutter on Shabbos, even the cereal bowl is not allowed just for power of needs, we don't pass them like that. So, so even in practical halacha, there are strands of mutter us about, um, uh, possibly, about even non mukta items like cereal bowls. But certainly a cereal bowl can be moved um, itself for, for just protecting the object because I don't want it to overheat or the like. And uh, um, but and but simply can't be moved for so sort of stuff in the middle. So, so sorry, so the practical a mukta is a mukta something which is mukta, yes. That correct, yeah. Correct, yes. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm not sure what you need for that. Are you covering the camera? You're, co you're covering radio. Moving the colors. Moving what? The ball. The ball. A cereal bowl can be moved. means it can't be moved for the sake of a, of a mukta item, but it can be moved for the sake of a non mukta item or to protect the object itself. It's seemingly, yes, also. Yes. Not, not necessarily. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon argue over how how many how many objects are included in the mukta status. What sort of objects are mukta? But once they are mukta, is not necessarily caught up in that. Uh, sorry, once they are not mukta, uh, something that everyone agrees is not mukta, there isn't necessarily a machlokas about uh, about moving it for no purpose for that. That is true. That is true. But I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But as far as I know, that doesn't extend necessarily to a machlokas about once something is designated for purposes, whether you can't move it may come on itself, for example, to protect it. Yeah, as far as far as I know. Um, sorry, so ju just to summarize, something which is um, something which is not mukta, just a regular cereal bowl. You can move it again. That's we know this from Shabbos, right? You can move it just for no part, you can move it for at least become itself if you want to just move it around or something like that. Whether you can fiddle with non mux items, maybe not, by the way, even even in uh in, in Tractor Alpha, something which is there are posts that make it that say that something which is designated but for constant use has zero mux, so you can even fiddle with it. But Klisha Malachta Hatta, something which is designated for, for occasional use. Albeit it's a clear and albeit it's a must to use, has to have some purpose in the movement. Um, but the purpose could simply be Micham on itself just because you want to protect it. It doesn't need to be a, a useful purpose. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I see we've gone over time, so I'm afraid we'll have to stop, which is probably a good thing because I think I need to process the entire myself. So I mean, it's a we share Tuesday and we'll in there and can Maybe Tuesday, I'll, I'll aim to give three quarters an hour share because, um, uh, or maybe that's too much for us. I don't know about that. Um, actually, today was a very short trip because we started late also, so uh, it's very fun and uh, 